costume set workshop. And since we're not, uh, since we're actually getting back on schedule here, I'm gonna, at this time, I'll actually introduce the panelists. I was, I, feel, I feel terrible because I didn't introduce the panelists last time. But you guys all knew who they were, so it's okay. Who are those guys? They do the stuff with the junk. So how did you guys enjoy the uh, the design and power set workshop? <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe next time. All right. Yeah, we that was a ton of fun for us. I know a lot of people were super excited. Were uh, a lot of the staff I talked to were super happy with that, and really liked how that turned out. So. Um, so here we go, we're going to get rolling with the Design a Costume Set Workshop, or as I like to call it, the one panel where Matt Miller gets to sit down and watch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so while David gets going here, excuse me as I eat my ice. <laughs> All right, so here we go, guys. We're going to do uh, we're going to do it very much the same way that we did the last one. So we're going to do the elevator pitch again. Um, so you're going to get your chance to to make uh, to, to to pitch your costume idea. And I think I really like the 90 second theme. The 90 seconds seems to be just enough, more than enough time actually. You guys think we should just lower it down to 60 seconds? Yeah. 60 seconds is probably enough. 60 seconds is probably enough. Okay. Okay, so here's some advice. Here's some advice. Uh, when you're describing your costume set, don't be afraid to give us inspirations that you have for it. So any sort of reference material and things like that. Um, any of that stuff is is helpful. Uh, you know, we when we when we start uh, exploring the ideas of something, uh, you know, like say the cyberpunk uh, costume set. You know, one of the things we do is we go out there and we pull different images uh, from all over the the World Wide Web, that their internets, and we uh, and we we use that as kind of an inspiration or a basis for where we start working through the creative process. So please help us help you through the creative process by sharing your inspirations. Help us help you help us help. No way to help. Staff fighting, staff, staff, staffity, staff, staff. <laughs> Our cannibalier are insane. All right, here we go. So here we go for the design of costume set workshop to kick us off. The name is appropriate to the name of the costume set, actually. So can we have Queen of Eels please come to the microphone? Queen of Eels. Oh, there she is back there. Give her a round of applause, folks. It seems like some of the best. We had tons of amazing ideas from our lady, uh, our lady players. So thank you very much. Microphone's right over there. So girl, women represent. Lots of great ideas from the women. All right, here we go. So Queen of Eels, you have 90 seconds. I'm sorry, 60 seconds, because we I think 60 seconds can do it. So 60 seconds for your elevator pitch of aquatic life. Lobster claws, crab claws, eyes on stalks. <laughs> I love the fish head from the Halloween pack, and I love more fish heads and scales. Okay. Any other inspirations? You were being very descriptive with the, the lobster claws and things like that. What other uh, parts do you think would be great for that? I had a whole list, and now I forget Would you like another list? Here you go. Crustacean armor, a nice wet aura, maybe some dripping. <laughs> CB, scales, oh, no. tentacle arms. Tentacles. <laughs> I think our animator's heads just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> they exploded with tentacles. <laughs> with, the, with tentacles. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause.
Okay, so here we go. Uh, another another uh, uh, heroine from our fair city. Uh, the one and only Impish Cat. Alright, so as Impish Cat makes her way up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, um, you know, these are a lot of different themes. Which one would you like to? <laughs> Essentially. All right, so here we go. Impish Cat is going to give her uh, 60 second elevator pitch for a Polynesian slash Aztec costume set. Whoa. And go. Um, yeah, basically. Polynesian, Aztec, um, grass skirts, um, feathered headdresses, just really something kind of elaborate and, and um, ceremonial or traditional even. Um, I'd love to see, you know, weapons and things like that along with, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just, uh, uh, Banished Pantheon, you know, we see a lot of that a lot of where we don't have that kind of access for ourselves, and, and I would love to have that kind of thing for ourselves. So you like the, the tiki necks and the feathered collars? I do, and, and I like the idea of having flowers in your hair, or your lace for the women, or, you know, that kind of thing, or, um, you know, just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Thank you for paying attention over there. You guys have got to pick three of these, remember. All right, so uh, here we go. Oh, geez, really? Where is she? Where? Michelle, where are you? What? <laughs> there you are. Okay. I'm just kidding. Oh, thanks. I'm just kidding. Okay, Michelle, come on up here. Give a round of applause for Sam Rico. No. Do you need this or? Uh, no. Okay, good to go. I can read your handwriting. So this is a little bit like the last one, but it's more specific, so that's okay. So here we go. that you have a lot of the impressions I get is blood and gold. You want to see something very savage, a lot of angles, um, a lot of static. Um, yeah. But also that you have, like, we have the animal heads and stuff, but something like furs or skins or uh, a lot of, for example, turquoise. And I can never remember what it's called, but it's like, it's not exactly a breastplate, but it's... Thank you. I knew somebody would knew what it was. But um, it's not exactly armor, but it's a different sort of chest piece that both male and female could wear. Um, yeah, very, very Mesoamerican look. So Mesoamerican. Okay. Anything else you would like to see added in there? Weapons or anything like that? Um, everything I imagine is very angular and very rough. You know, not as sophisticated, elegant as. A lot of type of these looks, you know, that this stuff looks like hewn obsidian or, you know, bronze or stone. All right, and there we go. That's 60 seconds. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Yeah. All right, I, Alfen, Alfen Rita, uh, Alferida. There we go. Remember guys, speaking to the mic so everybody at home watching on Ustream can hear you. Alright, so Alferida, tell us why pirates be the next costume set for City of Heroes. Gar, we need pirates. We need a couple more floppy hats. We actually need, you know, a floppy shirt for guys. Something that actually, you know, the Will Turner look from, you know, the pirate movies. Or Daryl Flynn or anything. We have some tight shirts and so forth, but we need ruffles for guys. Yes, cutlasses. We need a sash for guys. 
you know, say, I finally got one for girls, but you need a sash for guys. You need to look to have that nice pirate swashbuckler look. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give Alfred a round of applause. Oh, David, David, David. <laughs> so let's give a round of applause for uh, for David Nakayama making his return out here. And while we're at it, we'll take a short break to so introduce the rest of the panel as well. Uh, we have uh, the producer of Team Evil, I mean, uh, the <laughs> Paragon Market Team, uh, er, uh, Eric Johnson, Clockwork 01. Uh, next to Eric, we have another Eric, Eric Chin, uh, one of our uh, senior ca character artists. He's been on the team for quite a while. <laughs> the man who's been filling David's shoes on City of Heroes, our uh, concept artist extraordinaire, William Balzer. All righty. Okay, so here we go. Uh, uh, secretly, I hope this one wins, uh, but um, because I've got lots of character concepts, I could go with this. Ellie Dorado, could you come on up? All right, give her a round of applause. All right. So, tell us why. Pulp Hero and Detective is my heart's desire. Uh, pulp Heroes are freaking awesome, and if you add the noir into it, then you have enough pieces that you can mix and match and make a 1930s or 40s hero. You can have Doc Savage, you can have Sky Captain, you can have all of the Maltese Hammer uh, detective guys. You can, for those people that asked last time for more modest skirts, a little bit longer skirt for the girl detectives. Um, it's just one of my favorite jackets. <laughs> and the smoking jacket is good too. <laughs> and you could even fit Cthulhu in there because some of that 30s stuff has tentacles coming out of pockets. <laughs> I think I think there's one over Addison back there. So. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that is a completely different kind of costume set. <laughs> Let's give, let's give Ellie Dorado a round of applause. Thank you very much. Why am I not surprised that this 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 gentleman is up here with a with an idea? Because everything he does is so fabulous. <laughs> Are we fabulous? <laughs> Exquisite in his pinky. Okay. All right. Let's go, Fabby, darling. Please. <laughs> he took off the cape, so I can't do the voice anymore. All right. Excuse me. Serious face. So, uh, Andrew, could you please tell us why post-apocalyptic should be the next costume set? Beyond the fact that we just selected radiation armor as the new power set? I mean, come on. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to see the downfall of Praetoria. We're going to be having Tyrant himself nuking the Magisterium. We already saw the picture, so it's not breaking into deities or anything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've got all of this really cool, you know, we were doing the, the radiation here. We're nuking Praetoria. Let's show something and be like, okay, you know what? My Praetorian, he came from the, he came from the Wastelands. He came from First Ward. He came from Night Ward. He came from the Outlands beyond. He survived the Hamathon. Or better yet, someone who just, you know, you know, some lone straggler in Eden. Let's get something with like gas masks for the shoulders, like uh, like the like the cow skulls on the gunslinger. Let's get something that's not just a shredded outfit or a shredded robe. Let's get something that's you know like you know it's it's. Kind of like leather armor, but it's torn to hell. It's got, you know, some pieces of, you know, metal just sort of strapped into it, so you can get some nice, uh... Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Not harder than it looks, sir. 60 seconds. Nice. Let's give all the a round of applause. Great job, this is a great idea. All right, here we go. So, uh, so Jeff Smith, let's get you up to the microphone. Give him a round of applause, Justin. So Justin, you are a little bit specific. 
uh, in your suggestion. So I'm going to give you a little, uh, a little suggestion. You can run with it if you like. Um, so Jeff originally suggested a Knives of Artemis costume set, but talking with David, we'd like to expand that that uh, that uh, description a little bit more into paramilitary. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, can you give us a 60-second pitch as to why paramilitary should be the next costume set? I can try, but the point of the Knives of Artemis actually it's a combo with uh, I filled out the card for the power set at the same time. Crossbows off your wrist are just cool, and the Knights of Artemis have them, and we don't. So, uh, but they, they got a really cool costume set, and I, I would like to have them available for us. Um, the paramilitary wasn't really where I was going with the idea. But. Okay, so well, yeah. if you can tell us, aside from the arm crossbows, what is the thing that you like about the Knights of Artemis well, look? Well, actually, that, it is a paramilitary look. I like just all the, the, they have a lot of cool equipment and cool, a lot of cool tech that you can, you know, night vision goggles and those kind of things that we don't really have available on the, on the, um, general costume picks. They got a lot of just stuff, weapons strapped to their body, that kind of stuff. Okay. And ears. Anything else about that? You're good? Thank you very much. Let's give uh, Jeff a round of applause. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Alan Duncan. Please come to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking out the forehead. <laughs> the chest isn't big enough. Okay, guys. So, uh, <laughs> oh, all right, here we go. Alan Duncan. Oh, we gotta get we gotta get somber and serious here. So, can you tell us, Alan, why is death the next costume set? Sixty seconds. Go. I don't see enough long robes. Like. Road costumes just, you know, they have shirts, not like the circles, circle thorns, those kind of robes are what I'm looking for. And the bone options are just, yeah. <laughs> and for staff writing, definitely I would like to see a sign. So are you going for more of kind of like a death motif, like, uh, uh, I don't know, David, you want to chime in there? He is. He is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, he what do you mean I've done already? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I missed out on this panel last year. This was awesome. Um, so, are you going for more of kind of like a gothic feel, or uh... I don't know? I just, I just think the the theme of the dark gothic death, all that stuff is is a great theme. There's a okay. lot we can do with that, and the crowd could definitely give us lots of great ideas on that theme. All right, outstanding. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, here we go. Well, we kind of had this already, but uh, that's okay. I think we can actually we can we can do a little bit more on this one. I think maybe. Um, Sultry Siren, where are you? Yay! There we go. This one. Well, let's just give a round of applause to the Redwoods for organizing and running the Real World Hero every single year. Thank you, amazing work with that. We really, really. Without you, we're nothing. <laughs> Please. Um, I was talking to them. Oh. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Five seconds, go. Okay, so building on what and, you said with the film noir. So here's film noir from uh, Mrs. Wentworth. Right, so basically it's very similar. Um, I was kind of going with the same type of theme. This is really low. Um, <laughs> And going with like like the whole detective thing, a little Humphrey Bogart, a little you know uh, Hepburn, um, the torch singer that comes out and kills you with a gun, you know long gloves, ladies' hats, nice hair, because our hair kind of could use some help. Um, please, it's it's stale, and we all cut our hair more often than that. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Okay, outstanding. Thank you very much. We get a we get a feedback loop if we have a taste facing the front and picking up the mic itself. Alrighty, wow, we got through a lot of this, and we've got one more to go. 
And that person is going to be F. Dustin Peace, otherwise known as Fireheart. Come on down. Here are the next contestant of Design the Costume Sets. Show me potato salad. <laughs> okay. All right, so Dustin, uh, Fireheart, you are going to be uh, presenting the costume set uh, you have written down as Elf Knot. Yes. Or Celtic Knot type of Or something Celtic, like. it's, it's like... Uh, your okay, generic, your generic, go. Okay, it's basically your generic fantasy uh, Renaissance type thing where tunics, you know, a shirt with a skirt, not just. Uh, I mean, we've we've been able to fake it with uh, robes and stuff like that, but uh, this is a little more specific to that, to to the uh, genre. Um, half gloves, half boots, um, which that aren't uh, bare above, but actually continue your um, um, tights color. Uh, and uh, like a point, a hat with a feather in it. And stuff like that. Okay, that's good. Right on, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, geez. David, what are you doing? David Druitt. What are you doing? David Druitt Quiver! I want one! <laughs> Eric? Mr. Johnson, this is your fault for not reaching across. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's give a hand, a uh, round of applause to everybody who put this together. I'm going to hand this over to the and they're going to start talking. In the meanwhile, I want to show you guys some more uh, screenshots. Hold on. There you go. So remember, we're going to do the top three. And uh, let's see. Oh, wait, actually, I don't have the, the more screenshots. Never mind. I don't have them on this one. Ustream. That's my fault. Well, it's okay. Oh, God, you <laughs> so while they're, did you guys have any questions for David? Hey David, did we get any new comments before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Outside, it's fun to do that from time to time, but uh, I'm actually really busy with, with uh, stuff at Paragon, but you can't tell me. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> What's your expected dead goldfish count this year? We'll see. I'll find a way to sneak him in here somewhere. <laughs> Why did that awesome brain slug you drew at the last uh, yeah. uh, uh, Freedom Summit get into the retro sci-fi? Uh, I think the short answer is that we love the idea, but felt like it could be expanded into a, a different set. Its own set? You know, like it, was sort of an out, it was an outlier in the retro sci-fi, but could be expanded to be like an entire parasitical organism type thing. Brain slug Brain Yeah. Brain slug melee. Brain slug Okay, that's kind of bio Okay, give us uh, just a second here, and the developers look like they're in agreement. I see nodding. I have a quick question for you. What is the most difficult thing you find to draw? Hmm. Draw me feel feet. <laughs> surprisingly easy. I think the hardest thing just to render uh, and design uh, is probably anything mechanical. Because you have to sit there twice as long and think about, okay, how does this actually work? And, and then draw it with lighting on every angle. That, that can take more time than a shirt. <laughs> you know? yeah. Anybody else notice that the clock work on the last slide for the presentation would not work in any way? The gears were together. Right, on the, on the power set one? Yeah, I totally noticed yeah. that. <laughs> when are we going to get a dead fish emblem? <laughs> right now. It looks like a dead carrot, sorry. Art mojo week today. I can only see this much. Why doesn't the cool cue and staff fighting match the one with the top cool emote? Because the first one was really tiny. 
No, I didn't work on the poll cues. Does size matter? All the markings on the Oh, okay. before, before, any, before Andy makes his announcements, I'd like to throw out the disclaimer that just because yours didn't get thrown up here as the one we're picking today, doesn't mean that the idea is not on the table for some time later. That is true. Yeah, yeah just, to, just to reiterate that, I actually, I've got all of the cards in my bag, so. We save all these suggestions, guys, we catalog them, and we like, we really, you guys have amazing ideas, so definitely, you know, don't, don't be discouraged. So. Here we go, guys. I'm going to go ahead and read off our three choices here uh, that the devs narrowed down, and you guys uh, will uh, will uh, uh, help us decide by show of applause and uh, uh, squirrels in your stream. So, squirrel. There we go. All right. So the first one, uh, and remember, hold your applause until after uh, until after we read through all three of them. And then we'll, we'll, we'll hold them up for each for individual scrutiny. So the first one is uh, from Queen of Eels, and that's Aquatic Life. The second one uh, is Jeff Smith, and it's the Knives of Artemis set, uh, expanded more into the paramilitary. Yeah, OK? Yes, paramilitary. Paramilitary. And uh, the last one uh, is uh, from Arbiter Fabulous. It's uh, post-apocalyptic. Yes? All right. All right, so here we go, guys. Um, so. Round of applause. If you, th oh wait, where's uh, where's Fry Todd with the audio decibel reader thingy, the bobber? Make yourself useful. Fry Todd. <laughs> Fry Todd. Fry Todd. Yeah. Who got it? You got it. You got it. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Here we go. Obviously, we'll be Apple's most downloaded app today. Yeah. <laughs> so for Aquatic Life. Let's hear your support. Okay, that's anywhere from four to ten squirrels in your stream. All right, so for paramilitary, we're going to call this paramilitary, let's hear your support. All right, outstanding. And uh, last but certainly not least, Let's hear your support for Post APOC. Uh, my Ustream chat just broke. <laughs> uh, I, it sound, it sound, I'm sorry? How many squirrels does it take to break Ustream? Uh, a lot. All of, them, all of them, all of them. So it sounded to me like Post APOC. Did you, did you think that was the case? Yeah, it was about Okay, so I think I think that it was post APOC. Guys, are we ready to get to work? Yeah. All right, here we go. Post APOC. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. Go ahead. Let's line up at the microphone, please. Please be sure to speak into the microphone loud and clear. Do not turn the microphone away uh, uh, towards the mic because we get feedback loop if you do that. So go ahead and line it up, and let's start talking about inspirations and stuff for post APOC. And uh, we'll get some discussion going with the developers. <laughs> Obviously for inspiration, Mad Max, of course. Uh, for a specific costume piece, a bandolier of human skulls. I think it'd be pretty awesome. Pretty boss. Can, can, we, can we ask for a Master Blaster costume? <laughs> you cannot defeat Master Blaster! Okay. Uh, also, in the Mad Max vein, I want a humongous hockey mask. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brian's a reasonable fellow. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago on the shows, Willinger assured me that's the easiest thing to copy paste things from one uh, uh, place to another. Things that we see in Paragon, or especially things that you propel using uh, gravity, as pieces. Again, on the same vein of hubcaps become armor and such, so lots of repurposing of existing models. I'm hearing a lot of people saying saying lost out there right now, so, okay? Stop the, the loss, not the TV show. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, repurposed road signs, like stop signs is armor and chesting. Same thing. 
So I'd like to see um, combinations of materials like um, fur with leather or fur with metal armor and things like that. Um, and nothing symmetric. <laughs> Melting face. <laughs> Passing along a suggestion from my friend Squiddy Tent, who's been on beer today, and I'm going to quote scrap metal kludge armor. <laughs> and yeah, actually, one of the things that kind of that brought up um, anything leather but stitch metal into it, um, jackets, pants, whatever have you. And actually, it's something else that comes to mind when I think of Mad Max is things like motorcycle chain sash or belt. Okay. We have a suggestion from Ustream from Arachnus Commander. He says, anything from a Bruce Campbell film. <laughs> following, following along with the idea of motorcycle. I just gotta throw this in there. Groovy. <laughs> <laughs> Come get some. Um, along the same line, but, but motorcycle helmets with the, the mohawk, uh, with any certain tattoos or, or symbols painted on it, like skulls and things like that, would be great. I mean, something that looked more like a real motorcycle helmet. I'm short, I guess. Um, I'd like to see something that would be make up for jeweling blood or something like that. Maybe more use of barbed wires, like you could wrap it around your body somehow. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know, you could use it as a headband for all I care. <laughs> a new skin for the Arachnos uh, arms backpack. Oh, post apoc post, post arachnus with chainsaws. <laughs> um, I like greaves or elbow pads made out of uh, dead tires, and uh, also net shirts with uh, the the bigger net, like the fish nets, instead of the mesh that's already there, and perhaps piercings. Okay. Uh, for uh, tight weapons, a big baseball bat. <laughs> um, possibly for facial texture, stuff like just dirt smudges, burns, you know, you know just superficial scarring and stuff. Uh, rather than, you know, the, scar the full on scarred face and everything. <laughs> Weapons. We need to have for a broadsword and or titan weapons an actual chainsaw that is a handheld weapon. I guess I'm It's awesome. <laughs> More tattoos, especially for the females. Yes. Finally, get the full upper body for the females to match up with the men. Yes. Passing along, passing along another suggestion from my friend Knight Aaron's, uh, lumpy cancerous mutations, something that physically looks like you've been exposed to way, way, way too much radiation. <laughs> All right, so from yeah, Ustream, we have, uh, we have another suggestion. Yeah. Make it drip. <laughs> We have another suggestion uh, from Clockwork Seer, a snake pliskin haircut for men. <laughs> What's that? I thought he was dead too. <laughs> I thought it was that whole Detroit thing. <laughs> that was your mistake. Yeah, along with the, uh, the talking about the mutation, I was thinking something like the Toxic Avenger, but also something from City of Heroes is the Slag Goblins, which are radiation monsters, so if like the monster's head and the monster's feet, pull the slack all the NPC pieces out and let's do something like that. One other thing that always comes to mind whenever I see post-apocalyptic besides, you know, gas masks, gas masks, gas masks, is something that's kind of like it used to be a military uniform and maybe, you know, like the, the soldiers been in the war too long, essentially, so mm -hmm. something that might be kind of like yeah, a ragged uniform, maybe maybe uh, something like the uh, uh, elemental order, but just toward that hell. Are, are you asking to be the postman? 
<laughs> You're not missing much, it's okay. <laughs> Three words. Double barreled shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise known as boomstick. Yeah. Okay, since like hardly any like cotton meat fabrics can survive an apocalypse, how about some polyester leisure suits? <laughs> <laughs> That is surprisingly logical. <laughs> uh, also along the snake list kind of line, how about some updated and possibly fashionable eye patches? Yeah. With symbol. Okay, better, more practical suggestion. Can we have ripped jeans? <laughs> Maybe have a Twinkie throwing power, because Twinkies can survive the apocalypse. <laughs> How about something along the lines of, uh, you know, I need to call attention to the movie because my roommates watch all the time, but uh, Tank Girl. So, you know, the yeah. torn, the, uh, everything's kind of just torn up, so you got the burnout shirt, so, you know, regular shirts, but they've got kind of holes in them, um, the torn up uh, fishnets, um, raggedy edge skirts, things like that. No, I want the tank as a vanity pad. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we're asking for a lot of uh, torn up versions of existing costume pieces, torn up pants, you know, worn military uniforms. Probably a suggestion that is not viable, but I won't make it anyway, would be another, uh, the, the third, what we call it, just a texture that can be added to existing costume pieces that's just <coughs> ragged. Something that looks worn, has patches of dirt, and it looks like it's been drug through the mud. <laughs> so Eric, as the resident co uh, costume artist, uh, is that something like that, uh, uh, character artist, excuse me, something like that uh, feasible? Um, if we're using existing gel, basically the UV is merit, which means whatever red pattern you have on one side would be merit to the other side. So, so if we did something like that, you would have limitations on it in terms of what you could use it with, in terms of what's already existing in the costume creator, for sure. Right. It won't be asymmetrical. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go right Although, you know, we could like add a new geo, which would make it asymmetrical, but that means, you know, you could be using like the existing patterns on your pants, say, right? Um, on the uh, topic of like the uh, the skull bandolier for some of the more villainous stuff, maybe like uh, like personal trophies, the the, the the ring of tears, essentially stuff like that. Um, for uh, vanity pads, a ring of ears, or, or something like 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 villainous trophies, essentially. By all means, ears. Hold on. Um, that'll, pass, that'll pass the team routine. Yeah. Um, so you have like the eight legger room for the, uh, the the spiderlings and the, the, the new stuff. Like a giant, I mean I know it's not eight legs, but a giant cockroach vanity pet. <laughs> and a lot of maybe jury rigged weapons, like you know, sawed off shotguns or you know, it's like just random bits of stuff to make a, a gun look that much more nasty. Go right ahead. On the topic of cockroaches, I'm amazed no one has suggested any auras, so I thought maybe like an aura of cockroaches either running around your feet or falling off of you. Oh. Oh. That's like new trail aura, new path aura. Yeah. Could be both. <laughs> could, it, could it crunch as you walk? <laughs> hey, you guys suggested it, I just ran with it. <laughs> In oh, spot left, quite often you'll see people running around. The head, as mentioned, it's metal, but you don't want it to be shiny in most cases. You want it to look rusted. So could you leverage the uh, chainmail stuff that you're already doing for the leather and chainmail, take some of those textures and incorporate them with rust on them? So you want basically the the uh, chainmail and uh, the play armors to be like more used in distress. Yes. Weathered. Weathered. Yes. Okay. Deep. Some broken spots. Um, the katana set has the really awesome rusty blade. Yeah. 
Yep. We get that for like Titan weapon, broadsword, and axe. And then maybe for a war mace, get like a stick with a chained on cinder block or something. <laughs> I don't like Titan weapon. <laughs> Hello. Um, I guess mine would be like a make makeshift bandana, rip cloth, patch cloth, big scars, utility belt, belt with mixing <coughs> items, um, um, big huge gauntlets with lots of screws and animal diamonds. So once David actually, you know, gets through this, the concepting phase, what's it like as the character artist to actually try and translate that into a 3D texture and modeling? Um, so the first phase is we basically, you know, show that to the, uh, the character artist who's responsible for making the set and kind of get their feedback. Um, we'll kind of look through everything and make sure that everything is technically feasible uh, to do in our engine. Uh, if not, we either uh, try to redesign it to make it work, or we try to uh, uh, figure out another way to incorporate it in a later time, if we can't do it this time. And from there, basically, the character artist would start making a proxy model, which is very rough, uh, to kind of just uh, get the big shapes in, into the game. And then we'll do another review and tweak it a little bit. And then from there on, we take it to final geo and final texture. Outstanding, thank you. And we have more people lined up. Go right ahead. Oh, I didn't introduce myself. Dr. Laura Freedom. And uh, just to capitalize on the uh, atomic suit, we don't have any hazmat suits. I think a hazmat suit would work yeah. really great with a post apocalyptic thing. More terrible, though. <laughs> 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 We're going to need a hazmat suit to go into uh, Praetoria. Here we go. But you're superheroes. <laughs> Superman is <laughs> not that too. That's true. Go right ahead. Uh, Jet or broken glasses? Mm -hmm. Broken glasses. Okay. A la kind of a buckaroo or yeah, buckaroo bonsai. Six three samurai. Six three samurai. Yeah. Well, that's a. <laughs> uh, in addition to hoods, get a nice big cloak and sandstorms and stuff going by. You want not just a, you know, a jacket or a hood. You want the whole big thing covering you up. That and some new additions to uh, gas masks and goggles, I guess. Short person again. Uh, I'm surprised no one has mentioned it, but I'd like to see different kinds of hair. Maybe more like ratty hair, longer hair for the guys, maybe a 5 o'clock shadow or something like that. I mean, so, yeah. with the 5 o'clock shadow idea, you're okay with that taking up the detail too, that's cool. I just All like right. that. Yeah. That's the best place to put it, really. Yeah. It's the only place to put it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, guys, let's give, let's give them a chance to talk. Um, we get ripped tights. Like, just like tights. Alright. <laughs> We've been focusing a lot on the atomic apocalypse, but there is another kind that's relatively popular, the zombie apocalypse. So, perhaps a detail that is blood splattered. Just as if you've been carving your way through a horde of the undead, and your entire costume is covered in little flecks of blood. And in that same vein, uh, for all of our... Uh, oh yes, that was unintentional. Um, for all of our blade wielders, machetes. Yeah. Machete. I like machete. The blood's better, we have to be a little bit careful with. Obviously we're a teen rated game. We'll have to see where we go with that. Yeah, T for teen and uh, the Peggy USK ratings are pretty... Uh, blood. Pretty stringent on uh, blood. Green paint. As an accessory for these guys, I think someone should have a Geiger counter. Maybe even as like a chest detail, as a necklace hanging down or something that got strapped to their arm or part of their belt buckle. You know, utility back. Um, as a retro alternative on the hazmat suits, the old bucket head ones like they had for AIM in comic books. Uh, also for the gas masks and stuff. Maybe customizing details that can go on the gas mask, so they're not just a solid color combination, but instead have like lines or sparklers or whatever. Um, like actual trench coats, not uh, just a biker jacket. You talking to the bike, please, please. Actual trench coats, uh, not just a biker jacket with a. Uh, Coat tail coming out, but actual trench coats that wrap around the feet. Uh, example like Neo from Matrix or the uh, Katsuki from uh, Naruto. And so uh, we have a suggestion from from Ustream. Um, yeah, sorry, uh, I've seen quite a few requests in the Ustream channel for uh, some sort of wearable computer uh, along the lines of Bitcoin. A wearable computer along the lines of a thing from another yes. company's game. Yes. I'll give you a hint, it's not a lightsaber. Excuse me, laser sword. Risk computer. Risk yes. computer. Yeah, the other thing was uh, not just the boy reference, but also like the Geiger counter. We do see, I uh, actually do see another one actually that's kind of a, 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 speaking of laser swords, a Tuscan Raider style head wrap. Go um, ahead. I wouldn't assume the hospitals are going to make it, so something like satchel or med pack that's either backpack or worn slung over the shoulder or the belt. <laughs> Um, no. As far as weapons go, I think, you know, as elegant as katanas could be, I think a nice long piece of rebar would work really well. Go for broken beer bottles or something for if you want short weapons. Um, or if you really want to go for long, get a really long piece of rebar and take a car at the end of it. Still some cars are asking. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, just to go with the uh, improvised weapon set, perhaps in, in addition to the existing weapons uh, updates that we have, so you can look at an improvised weapons format to go with that. A uh, piece of iron pipe with a 90 degree bend on the end. Uh, a, a, a circular saw blade wired to the end of an axe handle. <laughs> These types of things that you can look at that somebody can piece together out in the wilderness and make a weapon out of it that you can uh, uh, add to either the uh, existing sets uh, and update those for broadsword or even all the way down just the, the knives and blades. Had a great suggestion, another great suggestion from you, Stream, uh, from the counter agent a dynamite bandolier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 
for for mullets. Um, I'm not going to say anything disparaging about the mullet. I mean, it's party in the back, business in front. You know, I think you got to respect that. Uh, boils, burns, and injuries on the skin. Um, uh, oh, a great suggestion for an aura from Light of, Fe Light of the Phoenix, a dusty wind aura. Like Chicago. Yeah. That could have multi purpose. Um, uh, from mo uh, multi foiled punk hairdos, half shaved, half spiky, by hawks, and fringe. Uh, hairstyle by Weed Whacker. We already had that last year, Steel Clock. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here, what else? We'll see on something other than Matt's head. <laughs> Brutal! Headshot! Alright, uh, what other... Uh, more, more requests for better dreadlocks. Cloth wrapped head already. Dreadlocks for both sexes, maybe? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. 
So, so David, I don't know what you guys did at this point last year. Like, did you keep drawing, or did you talk through it, or anything? Or what did you do last year? He drew goldfish. Yeah. 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 Summer, you get the heat coming off, off like blacktop or something. Heat shimmer. Heat shimmer. Heat shimmer. Yeah, heat shimmer. That would be great work. All right, go Giants. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage time. 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 Leads to some part of the leg, so you can choose one or all three. Um, or something else that I see in a lot of post apocalyptic, it's not necessarily thematic, but I think it would fit is a lot of like barcodes. Um, and I just had the idea here, it's like I would love to see for female hair like the uh, the uh, the Tina Turner Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome <laughs> big thing. <laughs> All right, so the general theme that I'm getting here, so we can save day some drawing work. Tattoos, barcodes, mm -hmm. tattoos in general are yeah. something that we should yeah. integrate into the set. Yeah. 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 Got it. Okay. Uh, here's a good suggestion. I have a great suggestion from Ustream I saw a little bit ago. Uh, golf club, uh, golf bag backpack. A la Casey Jones kind of looking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mutated skin that has grown translucent. So you can see it's maybe just like a bag of goo with a human shape that has been pretty rapidly mutated. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how it's implemented into the game, but with sleeves, make them uh, non-symmetrical. So you can do some of the stuff that's on there where you have like one ripped off and one still there, or one that has certain pads on it, certain metal pieces, and one that has different ones. So it can be, you know, used in different things too for like if somebody wanted to make a, like a zombie character or something too. Uh, sure, that's going to be at a cost of the uh, larger texture size. Uh, okay. Like uh, rusted implants or like you have that late, uh, like model Y thing. Make a rust version of those or the rust version of the robotic arms. Rust is cyborg. Um, as far as the hair goes, you know, in order to get like a two color hair or something, have the one hair be normal and use like your either detail one or detail two for a second additional like hair extensions or an extra ponytail that's a diff that you can do a different color, or you can actually like do a stripe of mohawking through the hair so that you can actually get a distinct detail color change by using one of your details that like you never use for whiskers. And as far as the sleeves go, you could do that for like the shoulders if you wanted to have your tunic and then have like uh, your shoulder detail be, you know, the odd size sleeve. We have, uh, I think we did, we've done some two-tone hair recently, and we're trying to do more. We're trying to do more. The closest thing you really have is serrated sugar, which I use a lot. <coughs> oh, it's it's really good. From the uh, Bob D pack. Yeah, is it possible to lose a hand? <laughs> well, I'll use the blood, uh, it would be it would be tricky because you get to choose your power set before you choose your body, and then you have phantom blade wielding cool blades. <laughs> Sorry, what? It's a costume item. Could it cover it so it doesn't show? So the hand part doesn't show. Basically, so you say you pick a glove, kind of just hand. Mm. So you just want basically you want a stump hand. Yeah, stop. <laughs> still run into the dual bag. Got there so many times. Archer blades, dual pistols. 
Titan weapons, <laughs> so many power sets that just don't interact really well with taking away a hand. Uh, we'll think about it. <laughs> I wanted to show some love for some more of the female characters because I think we've been kind of doing more on the masculine. But I kind of want to see more kind of like a tough as nails female character. Maybe a skin where it's, you know, you're seeing a little bit more muscle definition. There's some scarring, there's some scratch, scratches up. They, you know, they've been through hell and back. But at the same time, if this is post apocalyptic, you're going to have a lot more coverage. So maybe some of those, you know, kind of more film noir esque, you know, longer skirts or something that you can see someone who's been living in the wasteland, you know, wearing for that better coverage while still being inherently female. We had a uh, suggestion from Ustream of a uh, bandage covered head, but with one eye just kind of peering out from the darkness. <laughs> Very specific, but that's that's a good kind of specific. Yep, Jesse. Uh, there's been a request for just different types of helmets, um, football helmets, uh, motorcycle helmets with spikes on them, that kind of thing. That's always very good post apocalyptic fair. Oh, yeah. sure. Like the the mohawk mounted on the. Yes. Okay. Great. And to follow up on the toughest nails, women, muscular texture. Things we think about very often. The Hamilton T2 type thing, yeah. yeah. I would just like to point out that she, as it stands, we can take dual blades, dual pistols, claws if we have a pirate hook. So there is some precedent. There is some precedent for it. It does look a little silly, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see. We got some more questions uh, from, from your stream. Uh, suggestion for claw weapons, a blade actually strapped to your arm. Um, Obsidian Light is suggesting some short, kind of beat up uh, uh, bomber jackets, actually. Yeah. 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 Okay. If you can't have a stump, can you at least have just a metal hand? It, it could be like a, a not really functional robotic, but just something that you can reach out and grab onto something with. The, honestly, the pirate hook makes a pretty good argument for the stump hand, to be honest. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's, cer it's certainly easy on the art side, I mean. <laughs> I think I can even do that. <laughs> we have a, uh, a suggestion for a back detail, a third arm growing out of your back. to the kind of the tattoos and kind of the more muscular kind of texture for females. Uh, maybe a tank top that actually goes all the way down the belly and doesn't stop like mid-riff. Yes, yes. Yeah. They make yes, please. We have another suggestion for the co-op too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Saw a uh, suggestion for a Titan weapon, a couple of suggestions for Titan weapons. Uh, one is like a large arm torn off of a statue. Um, another one uh, is a, uh, uh, that I saw earlier was a helicopter blade. Um, so one thing to keep in mind for uh, a lot of our weapons moving forward, we're actually making them uh, Titan weapon scale, uh, at least the bladed we the blade weapons, the swords and things. So they're all Titan weapon scale, so they can actually be scaled down easily for all of the different ones. Eric can talk about that a little more. In general, when we're trying to make weapons of a, of a specific category, you know, like we're trying, if we're coming up with mace, obviously we're going to make it for war mace, but we're going to start off trying to make a Titan weapon size. That way at least it goes into Titan weapons and it goes into war mace, or it goes into Titan weapons, it goes into dual blades, it goes into katanas. So when you make a tight weapon, specifically with swords, it works out really well because you end up having to have a longer handle for the tight weapon anyway. So it scales down to katana very easily, so now you've automatically taken care of the oddball blade, right? And then you can go dual blades and broadsword pretty easily. All right, so we've got about nine minutes left. In the post-apocalypse, things are so bright, you got to wear your sunglasses. How about some fabulous sunglasses? Because you know, <laughs> so the, 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 the fabulous homage. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
well, since he did propose the power set, or the semi costume set. As long as we can break one of the lenses, that's all. <laughs> so for things like uh, war mace, something like the Manco Vito. So The what? It's a Incan war club. Oh, with yeah. stuff jammed in it. It's got chips of insidian smashed between yeah. the wood. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a cricket back with a rock in it. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. It's great to have the bales and things around through it. Yeah, the idea of skirts, yeah. this could even be like an overskirt. I'm thinking like the Romish soldiers or Wonder Woman in the New Frontier um, that kind of swings around and can be, can be worn over in leggings. Um, made out of tire treads. Yeah. Tire treads. Okay, guys. Wrinkle, go right ahead. Yeah, I heard uh, somebody mention uh, pipe, somebody mentioned rebar. How about we take a couple of thing, items like that and have them banded together as a Titan weapon where you've got several different materials banded together to create the weapon. Yeah. Speaking of tires, tire shoulder armor. Yeah. I was wondering if that one was going to come up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lost to it. As far as weapons, taking something like a 2x4 wrapping barbed wire around the end, baseball bats with barbed wire, pipes, rusted pipes with barbed wire wrapped around, anything with barbed wire wrapped around the rim. Chains on the barbed wire! <laughs> We've got a couple more suggestions here. How about just a straight nine there? Yeah. 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 I mean, that we get the achievement too. <laughs> <laughs> um, this will be for TJ, but can we get like a cow skull mask? <laughs> that has nothing to do with TJ. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid you misheard TJ. He said barbed wire. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you can do Pamela Anderson, that would be good. <laughs> I don't think there's been much talk about boot shed. What about like platform boots for men, a la Kiss? Some of their stuff with the spikes and soles and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Uh, to kind of tack on to TJ's suggestion of barbed wire wrap weapons, just clubs and such with random shaped pieces of metal stuck on the end. Nails, uh, chunk of a hubcap, random garbage stuck on the end of a club to make it hurt more. Okay. All right. So just so that we that we can put this all into one category, improvised weapons built from scrap, from scrap and various yeah. Yeah. nasty, pointy, sharp, grindy, beat up things. Yeah. 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 Uh, Repurposed materials for beating people up. Right. Yeah. Got it. Could we could we possibly replace a, or get a skin for dual pistols as nail guns? <laughs> so just uh, probably, <laughs> and that would be more than just dual pistols, though. I mean, that would also be uh, yeah. Well, the good thugs. Thugs. You can have your construction crew master when I do that. Give them a hard pass. Coming soon. Yeah. to the city near you, the foreman. I'm sure it exists. Yeah. 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 Rifle, so it's like it's it's broken off. You might have like a little more of the fact of you know some of the radiation leaking off of it or something. The leaking plasma gun. Yeah, so it's sort of like you know like oh well we found these parts in old Chernobyl. I think it will work. We told me in Russia this is how you use guns. <laughs> There are backpacks. I've heard very many backpack mentions, yeah. We had the, the golf club backpack mention. The golf club the, backpack's a good one. The third arm. Quiver! 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 Quiver!
Hedgehog has a suggestion. Something with a Q. Oh, nobody's mentioned any costume change modes. Maybe a nuclear explosion costume change mode. We have one. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't do a whole lot of a whole lot of trials and stuff, so yeah, it's okay. So this is not a uh, costume suggestion, but I need to make the artist at least both Fallout Shelter decor for bases. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> All right, guys. So we got like three minutes left. So, so David, uh, guys, team, do you guys want to say anything else about this? Uh, the ideas and inspirations that you're getting here. You know, I think a lot of this boils down to is. Uh, Ruining other things, you know, like whether it's leather or uh, or metal, it's like kind of kind of almost doesn't even matter what the uh, the source is. If we just ruin it uh, and we combine it with makeshift stuff, I, that's kind of it. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Straightforward. All right, guys. Oh wait, Protean has a has a suggestion back there. Uh, a suggestion and something to talk about with that. You could just consider it reduce, reuse, and recycle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he says you could just consider it reduce. Reuse and recycle. Uh, the other one is uh, post apocalyptic. You want to be uh, concentrating on survival, so, backpack full of canned goods, a bandolier of canned goods, things like that. Uh, another one is uh, power armor. You could have a belt with car batteries on it to power your power armor. <laughs> car batteries, things like that. Okay. Or motorcycle batteries. So, I, I saw a, a, a spam bandolier. <laughs> A spam delivery. A sack full of Twinkies. A sack full of Twinkies. With my trusty dog at my side, I walk the, the desolate wasteland. And my conqueror chore. I walk the desolate wasteland. Submitted for the approval of everyone. Instead of a normal backpack, how about just random bits of metal, you know, like you're, you're wearing extra armor on your back, essentially, with spiky bait, so no one backstab you. Spiky bait. Alright, guys. So, uh, so there we have it. I, I think the, the beginnings of uh, some further exploration into a new uh, costume set, the post-apocalyptic costume set. So round of applause to everybody. <laughs> diverse uh, costume, uh, costume idea, extremely diverse. So thank you very much to everybody involved. So okay, it's four o'clock everybody, or almost four o'clock. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna break. Uh, and after this, unless uh, any of the, I'm sorry, unless any of the panel members, uh, panelists have a, a closing remarks? No? Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and break uh, and we'll, we'll reconvene here in 15 minutes. Uh, bring your, uh, uh, make your case zone revamp cards. Uh, give them to somebody in a blue shirt, uh, somebody with a Paragon shirt. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Thank you.